Um, just very highly anticipated for everyone. And again, just very thankful, very grateful, and looking forward to a great game tomorrow. James Crepe of the Oregonian. Mario, I realize the expectation is that Micah would play. Do you have officially, will he play tomorrow? Micah Pittman will be playing. He's been practicing with us. And we always mentioned that there was a good chance he would. Uh, he has been cleared, and um, we're excited to have him back. On the far right, Ryan Thorburn with the Register Guard. Uh, Mario, back in the day, obviously you played in the Orange Bowl and the Sugar Bowl and recently coached with Alabama in the National Championship. Can you draw on that experience to get the guys ready for a stage like this, an environment like this, or is it something you guys just got to go out and experience together and see how you react? Well, I think it ties in more to the preparation of playing an excellent football team um, that's not only extremely talented, but the way they play the game, as physical as they are, as well coached as they are, um, all the focus has to be on ourselves getting better, but also understanding the caliber of opponent we're playing against. So, uh, but at the same time, I think everyone really appreciates and has a good understanding of what an honor it is uh, to be here, to having earned the opportunity to be here and not for a second taking it for granted. I think you saw that from our players yesterday in, um, in the presser. You know, they really, um, they feel it, but at the same time, they know that all focus has to be on the game itself. All right, we'll go on the left side. Uh, AJ Jacobson with Rivals.com. Coach Cristobal, um, how do you balance with all the all the events and things going on for the team during the week? How do you balance keeping them focused on the task at hand in terms of the game? Well, I don't know. Is there a balance in college football? <laughs> I don't. I don't think there's such a thing and that exists. The balance. I. I think you're you're looking at a couple of programs that uh, they understand this is a business trip that the newness and, and all the festivities and everything going on, again, the pageantry is incredible. I've never seen anything like it, but it's, um, it's not for the players. It's not part of their process. They understand that. Uh, we also, we, we schedule, we're pretty regimented as to the hours that we keep, what we do and how we do things. And we put a lot on the leadership council as well. I mean, I think in, in games like this, um, I don't think anyone remembers how many how many times you bowled a strike over at Lucky Strike, or they remember how you played the game, the way you played the game. So uh, it's been evidently clear in the way that we presented this opportunity. So uh, we expect our players to, to do and play their very best. In the back on the, on the riser in the middle. Mario back here, Warren Williamson, Oregon Duck Football News. Just curious what your final preparations will be after today. You'll lock down the hotel, lock down the players. What will happen, say, beginning from noon until tomorrow's kickoff? Just like any road game, it will not be any different at all. You know, the only difference is that you have more players traveling. So you just make sure that there, there isn't any extra fluff to the preparation or any type of distraction. But it's, it's typical road game lockdown mentality we'll go to the back right all right Mario Andrew Lee Doug TV Sports so over 30 players on your roster played high school football within 70 miles of the stadium how do you think playing in, in this game affects recruiting we've always made uh, Southern Cal a priority for us for us this is home state that's what it is we've made it a priority uh, we think that the coaching here the high school football here is off the charts as good as it gets in the country. Um, they are coached well. They, they're part of disciplined programs. They play high caliber football, high caliber athletes and big guys as well. So every opportunity that you have to show that, you know, you, you, you can earn the opportunity to be in a big game like the Rose Bowl, I think it certainly helps recruiting. I'm happy for them that their families and friends and their coaches could come out and see them practice and see them play in a game or whatnot. All right, we'll stay in the back here in the, towards the middle. Andrew Hobner with KDI TV. Mario, on that note, just what is the reaction that you've gotten from some of these SoCal players that have been able to see their families and kind of come home during this holiday and experience all of this, you know, with their families at home? It was good early. You know, we had that break, but we got here on Christmas, on Christmas Day and went right to, a, you know, a quick lift and a run to get ready, get our bodies back into it. But it's more of the message has been it's great and we're happy that you get to see your families but that again that feeling that newness that that was for our first day here you know maybe a little bit of the second day here the rest has been 
making sure that as it relates to all of us, every coach, every player, you got to put aside family and friends and, and realize what you have to do. You have to be mentally and physically ready. You have to be at your very best. And the best way to put it is nothing but being at your very best is going to be anywhere good enough when playing a team like the University of Wisconsin. Hey, Ken Go with the Oregonian. Uh, Mario, uh, second year in the program, Pac-12 championship, Rose Bowl. What does that say about the state of the program and, and where do you see it going from here? Well, it's progress. It's uh, what we had hoped for. Um, we always want to keep it on that kind of a trajectory. But I think it's all it's a tribute, it's a testament to the players and the coaches to buying into a blueprint and a regiment that's very difficult and demanding but can be rewarding. You know, it gives you a great opportunity as long as you stick with it and, and do your very best. Um, but we just we're so focused on this game because it's the most important game of the year because it's the very next game and we're we've become so process oriented that we'll, we'll we'll assess that at the end of the season but certainly proud of the way the guys are working the fact that they're improving as students they're putting an ungodly amount of hours in the community um and that we're progressing again as football players we're getting better and um but we do think sky's the limit uh, as long as we stick to our principles and values and stay humble and hungry and driven and realize that this is a tremendous privilege that can never be taken for granted. If we stick to that, we've got a chance to continue moving forward. Brian Maranthus, NBC Sports Northwest. Coach Cristobal, I was watching Troy Dye next to you at the team photo yesterday. He was so silly, having so much fun. And when I talked to him, he said he's having a lot of emotions right now in his last game. How much would it mean to send out this class of seniors with a win? Well, I think the seniors know that, uh, and we all know what they went through, right? Their first year here was a four and eight season, and there's not a ton of them, right, that are left. It was a, a pretty big class, but uh, I think it's a compliment to them how they've just decided to put their foot in the ground and work hard and, and be resilient through change and make adjustments and whatnot. And, you know, I think they also realize that the emotional stuff has to be put aside and has to be exchanged for passion. You know, that the way they play the game is going to be, you know, the ultimate difference in how they feel about themselves and about, you know, the football team when, when the clock says zero. So, uh, but it's, I love the fact that he is enjoying it because, again, these guys have been through a lot. And I think the fact that they have been through a lot makes their experience a lot more, a lot more um, rewarding a lot more of a learning experience, a lot more applicable to life later on, because it's just another example of you just, if you just keep you know, chopping wood, if you just keep pounding the rock, if you just stick to working at it, that you know, there's, there's a chance things will work out well for you. So really happy for them. All right, we're gonna go on the right side in the back row. Matt Prame, 24-7 Sports. Mario, how has the time off helped this team overall get healthy and just the, the legs back after a 13-game regular season? I think uh, we, you know, we look good. You know, I thought we, we played you know, pretty well in the, um, the last game against Utah. And our, our strength and conditioning department and sports science people, they do a great job. Half the staff, I don't understand, man. They come with these graphs and all these, all this data, with this, what is it, a GPS catapult, all that, and they try to explain it to me. And I'll figure it out one day. But uh, the numbers point to us being in, in really good shape while maintaining a really high level of conditioning so that, uh, but we didn't, you know, we, we kept the pads on now. I mean, football still is, right, a series of collisions and whatnot, and you have to stay physical. So. I feel that we're, we're where we need to be physically and ready for the game. McMurphy with Stadium Network. For both coaches, when the current playoff contract expires and they look at expansion, both of you guys, if it was an 18 field, probably would have been in this thing. I just wonder, when they do go to a new, new format, would you be for an 18 playoff or are you okay staying at four? You don't worry. <laughs> Talk about for today or for the future? <laughs> you know, I like to see everything that goes with that. I think sometimes, I know that decisions are well thought out and whatnot, but you'd like to see, you'd love to have obviously a six year cohort, right, and get all the data and see how it worked out and how it really, I guess, played out. But I think I wouldn't trade this experience for anything, so I want to make sure that part is clear. I think there's a lot of teams worthy of 
playing it out. I mean, it's we take pride in being such a competitive sport and determining who the winner is on the field. I think any time you could include more, right, in that particular in that in that party, I think it's I think it's a good thing. All right, in the camera on the right, uh, Julian Minutes on KZI TV. Mario, how important has Juwan been since being here in this whole process of being at the Rose Bowl, considering he has? been here before yeah he's, he's an older guy isn't he right he's, he's seen a few things he's brought a lot to our football team whenever you take a grad transfer you always want to find out pretty quickly is he going to embrace the culture and is the culture going to embrace him and mutually that thing was uh, very quick to happen so he provides a lot of experience and leadership the guys his heart is as big as it gets he wants to do well uh, for his teammates he wants to do everything he can to help elevate the program and uh, you know he's become a, a favorite with the fans certainly so having him around um, having him speak about his experience and what he has just gone through has been extremely valuable for our football team it's been priceless all right we'll go to this left side second row james Kreppi with the oregonian mario You've said a couple of times this season a phrase I've wanted to get the origins of. You say, we play football at Oregon. We're going to play football. In numerous instances you've talked about that. For you, it clearly is rooted in toughness and physicality. But it could have been something else. You could have, have been rooted in something else. So what are the origins of why playing football to you is what it is? You're going to have to say that question all over again. <laughs> You've used the phrase playing football, that we play football at Oregon, mm -hmm. that that's what it means to you. And it's rooted in physicality, but it could have just as easily been something else. It could have been I'm air raid you. or something else. I understand. So why does playing football to you mean what it clearly means? I just, I felt that football was always the best classroom and teacher that I ever had. I think the principles and values that come with it, the lessons learned and taught, both coach to player and the vice versa, I think, are incredible. I mean, the values of being committed, of showing toughness. And toughness is, I think sometimes toughness gets thrown out there as a guy that can really hit hard or, or dominate a play. Toughness is being able to get up every single morning and get into the facility early and rehabbing and getting taped and making it to your meals on time and getting in your playbook and showing up to practice with a great attitude. I think values and principles like that are what I, part of what I mean by playing and being involved in football because those principles and values carry over to life when you become a provider, when you become a future father and husband, all that other stuff. But, um, you know, I hope I answered that question. I try to answer as best I can. I just, look, football, my high school coach was the best coach I've ever been around. And there, was, there wasn't any compromising doing things a certain way. And it's our job, it's our obligation to make sure in the short window we have with these guys to be able to do that. And through scheme, through meetings, through community service, through the classroom, through the actual playing field, you can do that. But it does involve grit and toughness and resiliency, right? And being able to just find a way to fight through adversity, understanding that you are going to get knocked on your behind. You are when you play good teams and it's going to happen more than once and you just have to keep getting up just one more time than your opponent does. So I could go on and on on that question. I know this is a short presser, so I think I'll, I'll cut it off right there and hopefully I answered your question. For both Paul and Mario, we talked about the college football playoff and how encompassing it is for the fans and for us. And, and when, you're, when you have a bump in the road during the season and all of a sudden it doesn't look like it's likely to get in the playoff, how do you guys kind of get your your players, you know, up off the floor and convince them there is something to play for, or are they more resilient than we are? Amen. I mean, it's, I agree completely. I mean, nowadays, it seems that every single game is a playoff game, right? Well, as it relates to the college football playoffs or as it relates to your conference itself. So, and, and players are a lot more resilient than what we think. We always think, man, these guys are going to be down. What? No, they're a lot smarter. They're a lot more resilient and a lot tougher than what we think. So, um, Again, wouldn't trade anything as it relates to the season for where we are today. All right, last one on the far left. Josh Sanders with the Rose Bowl. Uh, coaches, this is for both of you guys right here. Uh, we talk a lot about the college football playoffs. That's, that started in 2014. The Rose Bowl's been around. Uh, this is the 106th game. Why does this game so special? Rock, paper, scissors. 
And when you have a, a game that's known as a granddaddy of them all, it kind of speaks for itself right there, right? And look, our players, our West Coast players, this has been their dream always to be able not only to get here and play here and whatnot, but to have a chance to, to be successful on January 1st. And they can tell you about all the games, all the games in the past, the players that have shined in a big time way. They can tell you about the tough games, the close games. And, you know, they're learning about the pageantry that surrounds it and everything that's all the, the incredible events that go with it. But they've been watching this for a long, long time. And since they've been knee high and playing little league football, this has been the goal for them. And now it's a reality. So, but, uh, and they also understand they have to get focused, but that, uh, it really speaks loudly within our locker room, especially when those guys realize coming off the field in the, um, the game on December 6th that we were going to have the opportunity to be here. So it's, a, an, it's an unbelievable moment for our football team. All right, thanks, coaches. We'll now switch over and do the photo op with the trophy here. As a reminder, everyone in the front stay down so the cameras in the back can get the shot, and then we will... Uh, once they're done, we'll get everybody in front.